A large bundle of brown feathers shot in through the open window of the skylight, headed for the stage, and began circling over Elmer, flying slower and slower until it became apparent... <laughs> what? It became apparent? <laughs> That's how... Never mind. That wasn't a bird call, he said. That was the song of the humpbacked whale, of course. <laughs> Sorry. The audience erupted into laughter. Miss Scrimmage screamed as the bird swooped down, swooping, ha, ah, swooping and swooshing. Elmer, who had noticed nothing out of the ordinary, was bowing, waving. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Excuse me. Have you got a stamp? Oh, stamps. Well, Boots just loves stamps, doesn't he? Boots is a big fan of stamps. Using other people's stamps. Why is he asking his friend for a stamp here? Why isn't he just taking a stamp without asking? Why doesn't he get his own stamps, come to that? He certainly writes enough letters. That brings our total to $1,547.65. Okay, wait. Ah, uh, traffic! Boots rang the doorbell. Boots rang the doorbell. Bruno rang the doorbell. Bruno rang the doorbell. Then Mary and Frank's wedding procession came along and squashed poor Miss Scrimmage's hat. I can practically hear the truck right now. Because they were driving a truck. Liver. 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 <laughs> liver! Liver. 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 Bruno and Boots rushed to the window and hauled Kathy and Diane over the hill. <laughs> this contest thing, grumbled Boots, is costing us 25 G's in postage alone. Chris Anderson... What? Chapter 9. Oh, creaking upstairs. Elmer, said Bruno, I want to buy that poster of the Pacific Salmon from you. Ah, oh, that poster. He picked up the poster and smashed it over Elmer's head, leaving it hanging around his neck. Then he pulled out his Instamatic and snapped a picture. Real nice, Bruno. Real nice. When Kathy was put on kitchen duty as punishment for this escapade, she didn't see Kathy ja Ugh, what? <clears throat> for revenge, Kathy knotted all Diane's underwear together and photographed her, perplexed and astonished, pulling miles of it out of her drawer. Diane has miles worth of underwear. The next day during lunch, portable microphones in hand, Mr. Snow, wait, the huge transport truck, its motor roller, what? This was a very popular entry, the Avotion. Avotion. For the next 10 days, McDonald Hall became the strangest, blah, blah. It did. That's what it became. What? <laughs> okay. You stay there. Hey, hey. Psh. After all, she said, I have been a Rocket Richard fan for years. <laughs> Aw, it is Canada. Mr. Sturgeon wound up and taught boot... <laughs> the sopping sponge hit her right in the side of the head. <laughs> Exclaimed Bruno Walton to Boots and Elmer as they dropped the last penny. <laughs> They collectively dropped the last penny into the bucket. It seems he colored in the magnetic peanut. What? Magnetic peanut in the ad for Ace Nuts? Hi. I'm reading. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm almost done the chapter. There was a loud crash at the door. <laughs> right. They dashed out of the dormitory, leaving a confused Elmer Drimsdale in charge of the money buckets. It's going to be a nonsensical, go-nowhere cliffhanger for everyone who's listening from week to week. Because it doesn't go anywhere. No, please no. As for the concerts... No. Ah, oh, traffic! Come on! Bruno, said Boots, you've been sitting here for over an hour. Blah, the traffic! Well, he is watching the traffic. <laughs> I'm gonna 
start this section over. I should, as they say, go for the other load. <laughs> then Miss Scrimmage's face came over the public address system. My <laughs> face? Sir! Sir, speak to me! Boy, these S's are sharp. He turned dark, anxious eyes on the ad- We've gotten into trouble before, but this time nothing can keep us from being expelled. I'm doomed! My folks will kill me! Even York Academy is beginning to look good. Get a hold of yourself! Okay, I'm done! I have a head- No. <laughs> yeah, I have a head. I'm a headmaster. I'm master the head. Kathy and Diane stood. <laughs> okay, three O's. Hmm. It was not long before they were propped up in adjacent beds in the infirmary, downing steaming bowls of cream of wheat with great wellish. B great wellish. With great wellish. <laughs> Traffic. Boots. It, no, Bruno. <laughs> Big for your age, aren't you? Ho 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 ho. Walk! exclaimed Boots. It's seven miles back to the hall. Pat, catch a low flying plane. George is engaging in insider trading. That's seriously illegal, is it not? Maybe it wasn't back in the 70s when this was written. 79. Maybe George is a villain, I don't know. It's too big a wrist. A wrist? That wrist is far too big. Ralph Colacci pulled his laundry truck into the small shopping center parking lot, got out, and headed for the diner with a cup for a cup of coffee. Okay, water. Boots O'Neill appeared O'Neill. Good idea, said Bruno. Then we'll still have the account here all ready for us when we bring in the big bun the boodle. We're doomed, moaned Boots miserably. B miserably? Growing reports. No. He burst into tears. Aw, Elmer. You're not such a creep after all. You earth dummies are not so... <laughs> One more chapter. After the last. He felt like the leading actor in a... Oh, traffic. Leading actor in traffic. Never a good situation to be in. Traffic. George, said Bruno in supply. In supplies? George, said Bruno in, dis <laughs> in disguise? Yes, sir, said Bruno, but Kathy made horseradish cake and won 300... 